All right. Thanks, Jack. And thank you to the Office of Civic Engagement for this awesome opportunity. Um, is anyone else really hungry right now? <laughs> so this might not help. We're talking about food. Um, but just a show of hands, how many people here would like to see more transparency within our food system? All right. Awesome. So that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. And so today, we as a nation are facing many struggles within um, our nation from the industrial food industry. So I'd like to take you through four aspects of these critical issues that are directly linked to the industrial food industry. And those will include the environment, um, consumer health, the producers, and the economy. So to start off with the environment, the Chesapeake Bay. This uh, is the largest estuary in the United States, and we are fortunate enough to have it right in our backyard. Unfortunately, we failed to do a good enough job at keeping our backyard clean. As you can see, there's a lot of red, and this red shows all the dead zones found in the Chesapeake Bay. And we also are part of the largest dead zones found in the United States in the Chesapeake Bay, and these are caused by eutrophication. And this is uh, excessive nutrient pollution, um, which is primarily coming from unsustainable chicken farms. So in, along with the environmental uh, depletion of our vital ecosystems, humans are also struggling their own battles. Many people today are trying to make more conscious decisions of where they're buying their food, what additives are put into it, and um, all this is great. This is also very difficult because large food companies are very good at deceiving and misleading us with their advertising and their labeling. And so therefore, we are persuaded to purchase these products anyway. It's just a very simple example, Heinz ketchup. Most of us love ketchup. And so they have a product that is labeled with reduced sugar, which is great, somewhat true. They do reduce the sugar. However, they fail to mention that sugar is just supplemented with more artificial sweeteners. And many people know nowadays artificial sweeteners are even worse for our health. So along with our human health and the struggle that we are facing, the producers are struggling their own battle, those who are processing and producing it. The large food corporations are exploiting the workers by having low wages and horrible working conditions, while they get to capitalize off the products that we enjoy purchasing at such cheap prices. The mass production of overly processed food is extremely inefficient and is causing major water resource depletion. 60% of big food companies don't even acknowledge the water issues that are line within their supply chains. 89% of these major companies don't even want to invest in a more sustainable system to improve these, these food chains. So why not, you may ask? Because they don't want to invest the time or the money. We as a nation spend the least amount of our income on our food. We have this common misconception that our food should be cheap because we aren't thinking about the impacts and the consequences the, this would have on our health and on the environment and on our local economy and those who are producing it for us. As you can see, real food encompasses all four of these aspects and much, much more because it's an entire interconnected system. So what is real food? It's food that truly nourishes by being honest, just, authentic, and sustainable. So as you see here, um, this is a tool called the Real Food Wheel, um, and it's created by the National Organization of Real Food Challenge. Um, and it shows people that the, it shows people the intricacies of the food system and that food is something more than something we consume, but it impacts the world and, the, and our society on such a larger scale. All right, so Real Food Challenge is a national organization that encourages university students 
to use their leverage as students to motivate the, their university to purchase more ethical and sustainable food products. Uh, this supports a billion dollar shift from industrial agriculture to local sustainable agriculture. This shift allows people to access sustainable agriculture as well as helps alleviate some of the social and environmental uh, issues that are caused by the industrial agriculture system. And you can see on the top that there is an industrial farm and then a local farm. Um, another issue, um, another goal of the national organization is to create a generation of students that's, uh, that are politically and socially engaged in issues that they have the ability to influence and change. At the bottom you see uh, students that are petitioning and uh, trying to get support for Real Food Challenge. Here on campus, we aim to bring these goals of the national organization to physical change. Um, we will do this by implementing something called the Real Food Calculator. The Real Food Calculator is a calculator that audits the dining facilities and allows us to look at how much real food we have on campus. Real food is defined by four categories. It's defined by local, fair, humane, and ecological. Within these categories, there are specific qualifications that each food item has to fall under to be considered real food. Once we have put in all the information about every single food item purchased here on campus into our calculator, we will, the calculator will then tabulate all the information and will come up with a percentage of how much real food we have on campus. From this point, we will then take our data that we've, that we have, um, that we've tabulated and we will bring this information to the president of the university. From here, we will tell him about uh, the realities of the campus food system and we'll try to, and we'll have him try to support Real Food Challenge and our initiative, the goal of 20% real food by 2020, and also the goal to renegotiate um, that when renegotiating dining contracts, they must include real food language within the contract. This means that Towson will have a legal commitment to making real food change in, pur in purchasing from now and into the future. Uh. All right, well, the slide that didn't show up. Um, so uh, our other goal is to educate the public um, and to make more conscious consumers um, and students that also understand how the food system impacts them and the world around them. We educate Towson community by having tabling events, real food dinners, um, as well as screenings, and also having petition signing to gain support in our, in our mission. Um, we also work with several other student organizations, such as um, the Towson University Urban Farm, EcoReps, um, Veg Club, the Nutrition Club, and of course, SGA. With these clubs, our mission is to spread our vision even further. So there are over 360 universities uh, around the nation already participating in this campaign. This is showing us the importance of this issue um, all across the nation and that change can and is happening. A great example would be our neighbor right down the road, Johns Hopkins University. They have completed their calculations and have already implemented changes to their dining halls. This shows that a sustainable agricultural system does exist and is extremely feasible in our own local community. Other universities like University of Pittsburgh, University of Massachusetts Amherst, and the University of Vermont have also been extremely successful with this initiative. This program has the potential to create innovative community leaders, implement ethical and just decision making while supporting a, the growth of our local economy. And by empowering the Towson community and implementing these initiatives, we have the power to make real change for real food.
Thank you.